Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian and today I'm going to be helping you guys make one of the most difficult decisions in a hockey pool, which player you should cut from your team to make room for those players on free agency that look really good. Before we get started guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I would really, really appreciate the support. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Starting off with some forwards, First on the list is Thomas Tatar, Montreal Canadiens, 55% owned. And he was Montreal's top leading point getter last year. And as a Habs fan, I absolutely love him. The problem is, it looks like Toffoli has taken his spot on that top line, and Tatar is now playing third line minutes. On top of that, we don't even know if Tatar is going to keep that second power play time he has. So if you're in shallower leagues, you can definitely drop Tatar. If you're in deeper leagues, you can wait and see how he's deployed in the next few games. Next, guys, is Victor Arvidsson, Nashville Predators, 50% owned. And so far, he's only got six points through 15 games, which isn't great. And a lot of people are asking me, well, he's going to bounce back, right? Well, I'm not even sure at this point, because last year, he only ended up with 28 points in 57 games, which is not great at all. And it is about a point every two game pace. If you're in a deeper league, I would hang on to Arvidsson just a little bit longer to see if he turns it around because his shooting percentage is really low right now. But in shallower leagues where there's really good players on that waiver wire on that free agency, there's no point hanging on to Victor Arvidsson. All right, guys, so next on the list is Riley Smith, Vegas Golden Knights, 45% owned. And this is more for categories leagues than points leagues because his peripherals aren't that great. Now, even in points leagues, Riley Smith isn't that valuable because he's not playing on that top power play. I honestly would prefer either of his line mates on my team because William Carlson is getting top power play time and Jonathan Marshall shoots like crazy. His peripherals are a lot better. Obviously, in super deep leagues, I would hang on to Riley Smith. Next is Kyle Palmieri, New Jersey Devils, 45% owned. And right now he's playing on a line with Sharangovich and Maltsev. I mean, they're decent players, but uh, this doesn't do too much good for Palmieri's fantasy value. He is top power play, so if you're in deeper leagues, absolutely Palmieri, you can keep on your team. He should get you a decent amount of power play points. But other than that, well, there's probably some better options on the waiver wire in a lot of leagues. Next is Blake Coleman, Tampa Bay Lightning, 41% owned. And he's very, very highly owned in my opinion. He puts up some decent peripherals, but at the end of the day, he's just a third liner on Tampa Bay, and he doesn't get a whole lot of power play time. There's no reason he should be this highly owned. In super deep leagues, especially in categories of leagues, he's an okay play, but especially in point leagues, you can let this guy go. He won't do more than a point every couple games. Next is Alexi Lafreniere, New York Rangers, 35% owned. And it seems like waiting on Lafreniere to break out this year is just so tiresome. And it's just not worth it at this point because I don't think it's gonna happen. He's just really not producing. And we may just have to wait till next year for that big breakout. Next is Max Domi, Columbus Blue Jackets, 34% owned. In last game, he played on the fourth line, which is really, really bad for his fantasy value. He may still have been on the power play, but they didn't get a power play last game. So we couldn't say that for sure. Now in the deepest, deepest of leagues, you could hang on to him because of that possible power play time. But honestly, he's probably worth dropping at this point because he's not producing anywhere that he's been put in the lineup and he's not playing with Liney anymore. Next is Tyler Mott, Vancouver Canucks, 30% owned. And he is a fourth liner. And he's also on long-term injured reserve. Why on earth is he 30% owned still? He's out for a long time. I get that he hits a lot and he's super valuable in leagues where hits are important. But at the end of the day, if you don't have room on your IR, why on earth are you hanging on to Tyler Mott? Next is Brock Nelson, New York Islanders, 29% owned. And I don't really love his deployment this year. He's only playing second power play. And that second line for the Islanders isn't doing as much as a lot of people would have hoped. Now he does have three points in his last four games. So you absolutely can hang on to him and ride the high and hope that he turns his season around. But as I see it, I don't see him being super valuable just because the Islanders in general don't score that many goals in the first place. Next is Adam Lowry, Winnipeg Jets, 22% owned. And he's currently centering Winnipeg's third line, centering Perot and Appleton, which is not a great line to begin with. He's getting some second power play time, which is fine. 
But at the end of the day, as soon as Pierre-Luc Dubois gets back in the lineup, Lowry is going to be a fourth line center, and he's not going to get any power play time at all. So having him 22% owned just doesn't make any sense because Dubois should be back as soon as next game. All right, so jumping into some defensemen. First on the list is Mark Giordano, Calgary Flames, 79% owned. And like I say every week, don't drop Giordano. Try to trade him away for someone that has a little more value. Giordano is not getting that top power play time. Rasmus Anderson and Yuso Balamaki are both kind of splitting that top power play time. So it doesn't look like they're even considering Giordano at this point. He's somebody that you could probably trade away because he has a lot of name value for somebody else with a little bit more upside maybe. Next is Jacob Truba, New York Rangers, 48% owned. And I wasn't even high on him last week before he had an injury that's now going to cost him four to six weeks. He's great in categories leagues, though, because he hits a lot, he shoots, he blocks a decent amount. So he has some value there. In points leagues, I don't see him having a whole lot of value at all. And he can definitely be dropped for those four to six weeks because he's going to be missing a lot of the season at this point. Next is Justin Schultz, Washington Capitals, 45% owned. And I've been telling you guys to be a little bit wary of him for the past couple of weeks because when he was getting a lot of points, that was when a lot of the Washington Capitals players were on the COVID IR list like Ovechkin, Kuznetsov. So Schultz actually was getting top power play time and was producing almost all of his points on that top power play. He looked great, but now he's not on that power play anymore. He's on the second power play unit. And since then, he does have two assists through three games. I don't think this is something we can necessarily bank on, but he doesn't look too, too bad out there. So if you really wanted to, you know, stream him for a few games, you can. But I don't personally think he's going to keep up the hot play. Next is Jacob Slavin, Carolina Hurricanes, 35% owned. And I don't love him this year just because he's not getting that top power play time. Last game, he did get a goal and an assist, but that goal was an empty netter. So if you can get some value for him by trading him now, might not be a terrible idea because I don't ex really expect the points to continue for him just because he's not getting power play time. Next is Alexander Edler, Vancouver Canucks, 31% owned. And I especially don't like him in points leagues just because this year he is not getting that second power play time that he has gotten in past seasons. So especially in point leagues, I avoid him. In categories leagues, his peripherals are okay, but there are still probably some better options out there. Next on the list is Duncan Keith, Chicago Blackhawks, 27% owned. And he was doing well because he was on that top power play while Adam Boquist was out of the lineup. But now Boquist is back and Boquist is centering that top power play again. So Duncan Keith doesn't really have a whole lot of value. Yeah, he's putting up some decent peripherals in terms of shot blocks. But I mean, at the same time, there are much better options on your waiver wire. And Duncan Keith can be dropped pretty safely in almost all leagues. Next is Kevin Shattenkirk, Anaheim Ducks, 22% owned. And basically no one on the Ducks should really be owned outside of John Gibson and maybe Comfort and Raquel. But other than that, I mean, Shattenkirk's just not putting up points and that team is just really not very good. So I'd stay away from them. Next is Matt Grizzlick, Boston Bruins, 21% owned. And this guy just can't stay healthy. He'll come back for one game, get hurt again, and he'll be out for another week or two. Like just... At this point, why are we holding on to him? Like, it's, it's unfortunate because he was getting that top power play time. But now it looks like even when he was in the lineup, Boston was using a five forward system. And McAvoy is looking great too. And he's on that top power play now. So I cannot imagine a situation where Grizzly comes back and continues getting that top power play time. At this point, let's drop him. Next is Eric Chernak, Tampa Bay Lightning, 18% owned. And don't be fooled by the fact he's on Tampa Bay. This guy doesn't do a whole lot. There's no reason for him to be on your team. Last but not least for defensemen, guys, is Justin Hole, Toronto Maple Leafs, 11% owned. And Leafs fans continue to blow my mind. How is this guy 11% owned? Yeah, I understand that his shot blocking totals are pretty good. I mean, he's putting up some points, but come on, that guy, that's not really sustainable. He's not getting any power play time. So I really don't like Justin Hole. If you have him, you can drop him. Jumping into some goalies, and before I get started, I just want to say the first three goalies on this list, if you are in a deeper league that a lot of goalies are owned and goalies are hard to come by, you absolutely do not want to drop these guys. But if you are in a shallower league and there are starting goalies still sitting there on the waiver wire, then it might be worth dropping the first three guys on this list. First, starting off with Sergei Bobrovsky, Florida Panthers, 71% owned. And at this point, it looks like Drieger might have stolen the crease. So it's a little bit worrisome to see that. 
for Bobrovsky owners. So if you still can, pick up Chris Drieger. If you're in, again, if you're in a shallower league, you can drop Bobrovsky. But if you're in a deeper medium league, I would hold on to Bobrovsky and Drieger and see just see what happens there. Next is Mikko Koskinen, Edmonton Oilers, 55% owned. And it also looks like Mike Smith has stolen the crease. But there I'm a little bit less convinced because I don't think Mike Smith is a great goalie. But right now they're giving like all the starts to him. So that's a little bit worrisome, even though Mike Smith really sucked one of the last few starts. Again, if you're in a shallower league and Mike Smith is available, you can pick him up. But you can also hold on to Koskinen and just see what goes on there for the goaltending battle. I do think Koskinen will probably regain his starting spot at some point this season, just because I don't think Mike Smith is that great of a goalie anymore. But we'll have to wait and see. For now, in shallow leagues, you can drop Koskinen. Next is UC Saros, Nashville Predators, 51% owned. And again, only in shallow leagues I would drop him just because Nashville is sucking and Saros is not playing very well. If you're in a deeper league, what you can do is just add Pekka Rene and kind of play them both and hope for the best. But honestly, if there is another starting goalie out there available, it might be better than Saros or Rene because honestly, neither of them are doing great and Nashville isn't playing very well. Next is Casey DeSmith, Pittsburgh Penguins, 12% owned, and Jari really did struggle to begin the season. So it makes sense that people added DeSmith as much as they did. But the last three games, Jari has actually played quite well, and he's looking like he did last year, which is really nice to see, especially for Pittsburgh Penguin fans. You can safely drop DeSmith at this point. Last but not least on the list, guys, is Thomas Grice, Detroit Red Wings, 11% owned. And it looks like to me, like I've been saying all year round, that Jonathan Bernier is the better goalie in Detroit. If you have Grice and you're really desperate for goalies, obviously, if you have Grice, you can go ahead and drop him and add Jonathan Bernier because Bernier's only 4% owned and he makes for a better value add than Thomas Grice. All right, guys, you've reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment, ask me a fantasy hockey related question. I'll be happy to answer you. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tips.